This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to Gaza to Israel threatening to launch a ground invasion of Rafah, where over a million displaced Palestinians have sought refuge. On Monday, President Biden hosted King Abdullah of Jordan at the White House. During public remarks, Biden initially described Israel's operation Rafah as, quote, our operation. Yesterday, our military operation in Rafah, uh, the, the major military operation in Rafah, should not proceed without a credible plan, a credible plan for ensuring the safety and support of more than one million people sheltering there. Jordan's King Abdullah condemned Israel's plan to attack Rafah and called for a ceasefire in the creation of a Palestinian state. We cannot afford an Israeli attack on Rafah. It is certain to produce another humanitarian catastrophe. The situation is already unbearable for over a million people who have been pushed into Rafah since the war started. We cannot stand by and let this continue. We need a lasting ceasefire now. This war must end. Seven decades of occupation, death and destruction have proven beyond any doubt that there can be no peace without a political horizon. Military and security solutions are not the answer. They can never bring peace. Civilians on both sides continue to pay for this protracted conflict with their lives. We go now to Toronto, where we're joined by Dr. Yasser Khan. He's a Canadian ophthalmologist and eye surgeon who recently returned from a humanitarian surgical mission at the European Hospital in Khan Yunis in Gaza. Uh, Dr. Khan, welcome to Democracy Now! If you can describe what you saw there in Khan Yunis, the level of the injuries, how crowded the European hospital was, the threats people were facing there. Thank you very much for having me. Well, you know, I, I look at the impending um, invasion of Rafa and uh, the attacks on Rafa, and I know, because I've seen it, I know what's going to happen. I know the casualties, and I know how much worse it's going to get. When I was in Khan Yunus a few weeks ago, it, I've, I've been to over 40 different countries, um, you know, doing humanitarian work, uh, anywhere from in Africa, Asia, and uh, South America. and there, uh, what I saw in Khan Yunus were the most horrific scenes in my entire life, and, and I hope I never see them again. It was, it was just, you know, the bombings were going on every few hours at that point in time. The Israeli forces were about a kilometer away, and the mass casualties kept on coming in. And it was mostly, I mean, the majority of, of the patients that I treated were children, anywhere from the age of 2 to 17. I mean, I saw horrific eye and facial injuries that I've never seen before. Uh, eyes shattered in two six-year-old uh, children with, uh, with shrapnel that I had to take out. Eyes with, with shrapnel stuck inside, uh, facial injuries. I saw orthopedic injuries where, you know, limbs just cut off and dangling. I saw abdominal injuries that were just horrific. And it was just mass chaos. There's children on the floor unattended to, uh, with head trauma, uh, people suturing patients without anesthesia on the ground. It was just mass chaos and really horrific, horrific scenes. And I know that now with the bombing going on in Rafa and scenes of children hanging, exploded and, you know, half their bodies cut off and hanging on, on a wall because they've been exploded. I mean, those are scenes going on now, so I know exactly what my colleagues are going through right now in, in Rafa and in, in Gaza, basically. And, and doctor, uh, you, you were working shifts of 12 to 13 hour days. Can you talk about the conditions of the medical staff and the doctors you worked alongside with? Uh, where, did you, uh, where did you sleep? How, how, were you able to eat? Can you talk about those conditions you faced? Well, the doctors were amazing. I mean, the Palestinian doctors were amazing. Their dedication and their will to, to resist dying and staying alive was amazing. They're very talented, but they have nothing. There was no antibiotics. Uh, there was no painkillers. On the last day I was leaving, we ran out of morphine, which is very important in a lot of orthopedic injuries. So patients were, I mean, the whole, whole European Gaza hospital was at the time. Now it's everything I'm seeing, and uh, everything I saw is much worse now. But basically, it was overcrowded, 
about three, four hundred percent over capacity. There's patients and bodies lying all over the hospital floor, inside and outside. They had orthopedic devices coming from their from their legs or their or their arms. Um, they're getting infected. They're in pain because they're on the floor, so the conditions weren't very sterile. And if they survived amputation the first time, the infection would get them because then they, they'd have to be amputated after. A lot of the kids that I saw, and, and more than 60% of the patients I saw were children. They're thin. Um, they had no fat on them. They're starving because, as you know, Israel has had a, um, has had a food blockade since this uh, war on Gaza started. And so they're all thin with no fat, starving, and they're coming in. And, um, you know, it was, it was just, and, and we don't have, we didn't have enough supplies, enough gauze, enough antibiotics, enough instruments even. The instruments are, are rusting to kind of, you know, deal with, with, with the mass trauma. Dr. I Han, stayed in the hospital. Yeah. Dr. Han, this is Democratic Senator Chris Van Hollen of Maryland speaking Monday ahead of a vote on the $95 billion aid package to Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan. Madam President, I want that to sink in. Kids in Gaza are now dying from the deliberate withholding of food. In addition to the horror of that news, one other thing is true. That is a war crime. It is a textbook war crime. And that makes those who orchestrate it war criminals. That's Democratic Senator Chris Van Hollen on the floor of the U.S. Senate. Dr. Khan, you're talking about the thinness of the children, of the whole population. Yeah, well, you know, Amy, it's, you know, from, from what I saw and what I experienced when I, when, when, when I was on the ground, speaking to officials, uh, speaking to the doctors there, and this whole, um, you know, one of the whole aspects of this war in Gaza you know, the, the genocidal intent of Israeli politicians, um, the Israeli army, has been clear. What is really bizarre is they haven't hit it. They have openly called for it. They have openly called for epidemics. And, and so, as, as, a, as a healthcare professional, the attack on the healthcare system has been unprecedented. I mean, I mean the viciousness of it, the killing machine that Israel has unleashed on, on the healthcare system, I think is, is unprecedented. Hospitals have been bombed. Uh, when, when, when the doctors have tried to repopulate them, they've been, you know, sniper fire with drones has, has pre prevented them from going in. They've attacked the sewage system, the water system, so the, the sewage mixes with the drinking water, um, and, and you get diarrheal diseases, bacterial diseases, you know, cholera, typhoid is not, not far away. Hepatitis A is epidemic there now. They're living in cramped spaces. They have uh, killed over 300 or 400 healthcare workers, uh, doctors, nurses, paramedics, ambulances have been bombed. This has all been a systematic sort of, you know, um, uh, you know uh, 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 by destroying the healthcare system, you're contributing to the genocide. Uh, what's going on is now there's 15, 10 to 15,000 bodies that are decomposing. So it's raining season right now in Gaza. So all the rainwater uh, mixes with the decomposing bodies, and that bacteria mixes with the drinking water supply, and you get further disease. They have kidnapped about 40, 45 doctors uh, that have been specifically targeted. They've targeted specifically specialists who were, you know, one-off. So like the one nephrologist in the Gaza Strip was targeted. Um, the pathologist, uh, hospital chiefs and, and directors have all been targeted through drones or, or targeted missile strikes. And, you know, so the whole thing is that if the bombings are not going to get you, then disease will surely get you because they're all malnourished. So as you know, if you're malnourished, your immune system is weaker, so you're more susceptible to disease, but there's no antibiotics. You know, the, the amount of amputations I saw, um, you know, in children, for example, uh, both arms, one arm, one leg, both eyes gone, you know, both eyes amputated basically out of their um, eye socket. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it takes about, you know, if, if this was done properly in a non-war scenario, uh, you know, one amputation in, in a child, a child will need about 9 to 12 surgeries by the time they're an adult, you know, for prosthetic fitting and whatnot. 
Now, in this case, first of all, it's a war situation. They've not been done properly. Fair enough, because you have to rush it. But secondly, who's going to take care of these children, um, most them, mostly children, because their parents are gone, their uncles are dead, their um, grandfathers and grandmothers are, are dead. And so, you know, the Israeli killing machine has been vicious. I mean, they've used drones. When I was there, I, I was speaking to the doctors who were there, and they told me that they've used drones like the Hellfire drone that, that is an explosive drone. It fires off these discs once it implodes or explodes. And these discs are very unique and they cause unique amputations. Most amputations occur at the weak points, like, you know, like the elbow or the knee. But they cause, you know, mid-thigh, mid-arm amputations, which are much more complicated. And they fire off the shrapnel. And, you know, from, from what the doctors are telling me that, you know, what I believe is that they're using weapons on the civilian population that, that have never been used before. Because from, from what I heard, based on my experience, you know, uh, Israel has a very strong defense industry. And buyers like weapons that are battle-tested. So if you can put a label to a new weapon that's battle-tested, that increases the value of it. And they're experimenting with these weapons from, from what I've heard and from what I saw um, in a civilian dense population. So it's just, um, it's, it's been vicious, really, really vicious. Dr. Yasser Khan, I want to thank you for being with us. Canadian ophthalmologist, eye surgeon based in Toronto, Canada, just recently returned from a humanitarian surgical mission at the European Hospital of Khan Yunus in Gaza.